Hi guys, it's Michael Levine. Today I wanted to talk to you about a subject that is in the minds of every single hairdresser and every single salon owner. And I just sort of wanted to give a little bit of perspective. Very often I will come off as if I'm team owner, but what hairdressers need to understand is most salon owners have walked in their shoes but most hairdressers have never walked in the shoes of a salon owner. So a good salon owner will, um, will always try to see things from the stylist's perspective to a, to a really large degree, but at the same time, they also need to be educating um, those hairdressers to maybe have a little bit more perspective. So I feel like part of my job with these video blogs is to give people a little bit of perspective. Um, I feel like there's very often a divide between hairdressers and salon owners and for me I feel like I have a responsibility to try to to bring what shouldn't be divided a little bit closer together and to try to make people understand that those relationships don't have to be adversarial. Now I have a written blog as well and I wrote a blog post not too long ago that I didn't think was going to necessarily be a good one. I try to do video blogs for American Salon and I try to write my own blogs for my other blog. Um, whenever I write a blog, I tend to get a little bit of action on it and uh, I, I get some mail and I get a lot of mail from people that absolutely love what I write and I get some mail from people who absolutely dislike what I write. And I, I wanted to read one because there was a really well written and well thought out response to one of my blog posts and the blog post was simply on... Um, it was how to ethically quit a salon and and how to leave a salon and and ownership of contact information and that sort of thing and my my belief not even my belief the legal um, standing on it is that contact information is the owner is is owned by the salon people aren't owned by the salon but the information is owned by the salon so I wanted to read a, a letter that was sent to me that was a really really good one but I think it's a really common thought. And I just wanted to talk about it for a minute, so I'm just going to read this so my eyes are not going to make eye contact. Um, I understand where you're coming from, owning a couple of salons, having a ton of apprentices and assistants over the years, and working at and with the biggest commission-only salons. You get used to people sneaking out and taking their clients with them, which you absolutely do. Um, now, here's where she goes on. Except I see them as their clients. As a stylist, I was the one that worked my butt off for 60 hours a week to make those clients happy, and I was the one who kept them coming back to the salon. The commission I was paid was an even exchange, and we both got a lot out of it. To this day, I'm good friends, um, blah, 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 I mean, not blah, 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 no disrespect meant, but um, good friends with the owners, and that that's awesome. Um, you'll never be able to make dishonest people honest, but there's a really great, you know what, I'm going to skip that part because it's not really necessary to the discussion here, even though I really like this person who's written me this letter, and I love what she had written me. Um, I look forward to meeting her one day. Uh, anyways, uh, so so what this person says here, that the key sentence is, um, I considered them their clients, and in her situation as a stylist, that means she would consider them her, her clients, and she was the one, and everybody thinks this, she was the one that worked her butt off to make those clients happy, and she was the one that kept them coming back to the salon. And this is where a lot of hairdressers, I'm just going to close that because it's reflecting off my glasses. Um, so this is where a lot of hairdressers, uh, this is this is their belief system. They say they're my clients. They come here for me. And absolutely right. They absolutely do. And clients are certainly going to be loyal to you as a hairdresser. But understand this. When a client is coming back and a client says they love you and a client is... Um, loving what you do and referring their friends to you, recognize that you're doing your job. That's the job you were hired to do. If the clients weren't coming back, if the clients weren't loving you, if the clients weren't sending in your friends, you'd be fired, okay? So let's not try to take credit for doing what we were supposed to do, doing what we agreed to do when we took the job. It gets into that little bit of that Chris Rock thing, which I'm not going to go there, but there's a Chris Rock routine that's very much like, like, why are you trying to take credit for the things you're supposed to do? The most successful hairdressers in the world simply do what they're supposed to do all the time. 
Then there's a the next tier of hairdressers that are a little lower, that are maybe just a little lazier. And I don't say lazy in a bad way because we're talking the top upper, upper echelon of the industry it are the guys that just do everything right all the time. And those are the guys getting $1,000 for a haircut with, you know, a four or six month waiting list. Or those are the guys doing the celebrity clientele. Um, you know, and we, we have lots of those people that, that do everything right. And then there's the next tier down that are do, making a really great living, have a huge waiting list. And the clients love them and refer their friends. And, and then we kind of go lower and lower and lower. And the further down you go in the list in, in earnings and success, the further you go in people who are not quite as willing to do the job 100%. And, and right then you get down to the people at the bottom who sit in staff rooms and bitch and say, when is the owner going to advertise? Or, or I'm waiting for a client. I got another little bit of hate mail from a hairdresser that you know called me arrogant and all these other things and he's like you've forgotten how the real world lives and i'm going to tell you something right now i don't want to know how the real world world lives in our industry because the vast majority of the people in our industry are below the poverty line so yeah i don't know how those people live because i have always busted my ass to be super successful and every day that i'm in the salon and I've certainly I've had off days and we all have off days, but every day I'm in the salon, I'm in there trying to perform at my highest level because I have an agenda and my agenda is my own success. And that comes from being totally on top of things and and passionately making my clients happy with their hair. And now I want so let's talk about some of the things that you can do to maybe step up your game and do what you're supposed to do. Uh, one of them. Don't ever party on a night before you're working. Never. I did it once in my career. I pulled an all-nighter once in my career. It was like the second year that I was on the floor. And I went to work. I dragged my ass in there. Eyes red. It had been a really, really kind of rough night. And it was the worst work day of my life. And I used to be a hardcore weekend warrior. Like I would hit it hard on the weekends. Never, ever, ever did I let it affect my work. In fact, I actually went for about four years where I wouldn't even have one single drink if I was working the next day because I couldn't trust myself to not go out. And I know a lot of younger people have that kind of issue. You get a couple drinks in you and you go, I wouldn't touch a drop of alcohol if I was working the next day. Um, now I can handle it. I'm a functioning alcoholic. Uh, and secondly, always dressed on point. Like now I'm fat, but back in the day when I was younger, I was thin and um, and, and it, it allowed me to purchase better clothing. And I was dressed to the nines all the time. Like clients would come in to see what I would be wearing this time and had a lot of fun with my wardrobe because I wanted my clients to view me as a professional hairdresser, as somebody in the fashion industry. If you're a schlump who's just chucked your hair into a top knot and you're wearing last night's makeup, then no, you're not performing at your highest level. You got to be scrubbed, blown out, looking really, really good. Um, then, as I said, rested. Rested is huge. And then you, when you're walking in the door, you have to be on point with every aspect of understanding standing why you're there. Your goal is to make your clients walk out of the salon absolutely loving what you've done and loving their hair and wanting to tell their friends about you. If, that, if you make that your goal, everything else falls into place organically and then you become a successful hairdresser. But guess what? We hired you to do that stuff. That's what we wanted you to do. If you had said to me, in four years, I'm going to be sitting in the, the staff room and only be productive for about 45% of my work week, and I'm going to just, my goal is to make just enough money to pay the rent and just enough, and I'm going to work just hard enough to not get fired. I wouldn't have hired you when you were that junior stylist. So when people are successful in my company, like hats off to them, major applause. And in not just my company, but in the industry, hats off to them, major applause, but understand those people are only doing what they're supposed to do. And if we can all elevate our game and do what we're supposed to do, we can be a lot more successful. So don't pat yourself on the back and say, oh, well, the clients came back because of me. Well, obviously, if you were repelling the clients and they weren't coming back because of you, you would have been fired. Have a great day. Go do what you're supposed to do and enjoy some amazing success. <laughs>